Okay, welcome to the third and final part of the triathlon specific training workout videos. Whether you're a novice or an elite triathlete to help you with your strength, your stability, and your mobility on the swim, the bike, and the run legs. Now, this video is your final one. It's the run leg, and of course, it's gonna be legs again. And I'm gonna go through each exercise individually so you can follow along. So let's get started. So for the run leg, like the bike leg, we've got another leg day, but today is single leg, mostly stability and strengthening work. And we're gonna cover through hamstrings, quads, calves, hip flexors, but we've also got some essential core strengthening, core stability work to help you with the run leg, as well as some finishing off all the mobility work we haven't covered so far. So the first exercise we're gonna go through, what I like doing is warming up with hamstrings. Now we're gonna do a single leg hamstring deadlift first up to help you with your knee stability and your hamstring work, work on that posterior chain to help you with the running. Okay, so I like using kettlebells for this exercise because they're really easy to hold. This one's eight kilos, which is 10% of my body weight. Now when you're doing this, just try and remember the weight is in the opposite side to the leg that you're doing the work on. So if I'm standing on my right leg, weight's on the left. That also means my right arm is out. So whatever leg that I've got down the ground, my right arm is out. Now that's a counterweight, helps you balance, sort of like an arabesque type movement, but it's also really good for you to, if you've got a pole or a door frame or something to help you with the balance straight off. Because these exercises do involve stability and I'd rather you had this exercise where you don't have to hold on, but you may have to start off with if your knee stability is not so great and you're gonna work on that, is to try and do the single leg deadlift with a little bit of guidance here. I don't want you to hold on because that's gonna tilt you and rotate you through there. What you do is have this as a bit of a guide. And so when you drop the weight down, the same leg goes backwards and you hinge the hip. I don't want your lower back moving into flexion or extension or anything like that, okay? You want to make sure that your lower back is in neutral, your core is on to keep it stable through there. And so when you drop down, you bend at the right knee, but only hinging. I'm not letting that right knee, so my loaded leg, I'm not letting that go forward, okay? I'm letting the weight drop down. As it drops down, my left leg is the counterweight, and this right hand is simply there for a bit of balance to stop me sort of wobbling all over the shop and tilting like this until I get the right position and learn my stability. So sometimes it's really helpful to have a mirror to look at. So if I'm looking in the mirror, I can see what my lower back is doing and making sure when I'm going down, I'm not rounding forward like that and dropping down. You'll notice that I lose balance when I do that because I lose my core. So if you find that you're a wobbly, it may be that because you're trying to round down like this, okay? The other thing I don't want you doing is making sure you turn into, don't, don't turn into a squat. So if I'm here, I'm bending forward and that will mean that I'm dropping my bum down with that. Because we've got squats coming later, single leg squats coming later. You're just working on the hamstring glute component, which is what you need for the run. We need those hamstrings strong. So trying to combine this with a single leg stability exercise is a really efficient way for you to try and work on strength and stability at the same time. Because hey, with triathlon training, you don't have much time. You've got so much work to do as far as swim sessions, bike sessions, run sessions, and then trying to fit that all in is gonna be really difficult. So this sort of exercise, which is so appropriate for your run leg, is trying to build up strength in the posterior chain and knee stability, you're probably going to fix two birds with one stone with those weaknesses you might have. Now, you'll probably find with this one, you're going to have differences left and right. I'm clearly better on my right leg. So I can go down, I'm a little bit wobbly there, but I can maintain it. I'm stable, okay? Now that's because I'm a left footer. My right leg, is when I plant it, is going to be better on the stance. My left leg, if you watch this, I'm just not quite as confident. I've got a little bit slower to control it. So if you're like that, you might find you have to really focus on Okay, I need to hold on here, giving me that guide to give me a bit of balance so I can maintain a better form and get the muscle work done. As you get better, take your hand away and work, start working on knee control while you're doing it. Start off with the muscle strength, get that going first, then you focus on your knee control. So you're trying to keep your form 
good all the way through. The second one is hamstrings as well because I like doing the hamstrings first before you start getting into the full knee loading and quads work. It's a nice little warm up for that and it means you don't have to do a lot of knee bending. So by the time you've sort of warmed up and those tissues are warmed up, you can go through the whole knee bending cycle. And so those of you who've got sort of, sort of stiff knees or they're not so strong, it's a good way of starting. Now, hamstring elevated bridges. These are awesome for hamstrings. They're part of um, knee surgery and ACL surgery rehab, and they're really good for you guys as try to, to try and build up that posterior chain. What, and the good thing is, all you need is a bench. You don't even need weights with this one. You could also just use your sofa. So if you're at home, put your feet on the sofa or put your feet on the bed. Now, if you look at me, if I come into here, that's 90 degrees. I don't want to be in that position because that's going to work on too much glutes. We're trying to focus on more hamstrings. So I want you to come away so the angle from your shin to your thigh is a little bit more. Okay? It's an increased angle there. And what that'll mean, you'll find that you'll work way more on the hamstrings. Now, for those, this is a single, ex a single leg exercise. For those of you who are starting out, you may need to go back to double with this, meaning from here, you do a bridge, you brace, and you push, okay, to there, and I can feel that on both my hamstrings working, and you can play around with the angle. Obviously, don't go out too far, because then you'll start using quads. So it almost thinks, it's like, if you're too close, it's glutes, if you're too far away, it's quads. Halfway in between, you got that happy movement there, and that's hamstrings, and you'll, so you need to play around with that and feel which is the best angle to get and target those muscles there. But it's pretty full on for them. So when you start out, you'll find that you might have to do two legs, but eventually what you're gonna try and do is you have one leg in the air, you can start off digging your elbows in to stabilize and push up. So bracing here, pushing up. Now to push up, meaning pushing your pelvis up there, I want you to push your heel down. So rather than trying to use your back here, what you try and do, is drive your heel through the floor. And you can stabilize through your elbows back. There's a little bit of push going on there when you do that. And work on round about eight reps, not 12, okay? It'll be too much for you. And obviously, you're going left and right. But when you're doing this one, try to progress the point where you are here, okay? You'll find it puts a lot more load through the hamstring because you haven't got the drive of the elbows and you realize how much weight you put through your elbows to get to that position and just keep focusing on form, going up as high as you can go without arching your back and without cramping your hamstring. Now that's awesome for your strength up in here. Like I said, you don't need any weights. It's not gonna fatigue you for the next sort of run day that you might be doing after or the bike day you're doing after. Essential one, get that in your program. So that's your hamstrings done. Now you gotta work on your knee and your quads. So meaning knee stability, which actually means a lot of hip stability as well. We get our knee stability from working on hip strength and stability up here, plus obviously your quads you need for your run, so you know you get less fatigue when you're running straight off the bike. What I love doing is your one-legged ball squat. It's a really good quad and glute burner, and it's helpful to try and build up that single leg loading strength that you need. This you're not really doing with other exercises like you're doing in the legs. Remember, bike, is a single leg, but you're not doing any stability work because you're sitting in the saddle, whereas running is. So you need to be training the way you run, if you like. So working on strength loading and positioning when you are in that single leg stance phase. Meaning, if you imagine like, I'm going through a run phase, I want to be that stance phase on that leg like that. So mid stance, bent knee, loaded onto there. Perfect way of strengthening up that leg. So when you're running, when you're landing, that's when the load go, is going on, that's where you want to be strong and training in that position. So what I use is good old faithful ball. Now I've done a lot of exercises or videos on one leg ball squat. Hey, it's one of my favorites, but this one is really good for your routine in the run leg. Couple of tips with this one. Try and visualize yourself when you are in that stance phase when you're running. So one leg will be up and it'll be kicked behind you. So think of knees together, okay, level, and the position of this ball, the middle of the ball is where the knee is. So don't have it up on the thigh like that because it's really hard to push with that leg. So have it on the knee, because then that sort of load force is right at the knee. You're standing on the outside leg. Stand parallel, imagine how your feet will be landing when you are running, so they're not facing out or anything like that. What you've got to do is hold yourself up 
on the right leg by keeping not leaning on the ball, but keeping that knee pushed into the ball. Now, the more I push that knee into that ball that way, the more I directly feel it in my glute medius over here, and Max is working a little bit as well. So I'm holding myself there, and you can see the tone in the quad is already on. So I'm using quad, I'm using glute, already just standing in that position, all right? That's my stance phase. If you imagine when I'm running that position there, that's what I wanna get strong on. So what you're gonna do is come in and out of that position. So I'm gonna go down into that position there, and then come up, and what you can do is what we don't normally do this with one leg ball squats, but you can add in the running movement as well. If you want to sort of train your brain how to do this, you go through the running phases, like what your hands would be when you're running, and come back up. There's a sort of relief, but you've still got the pressure on, so you still feel it. And then down into the squat, and then coming up again. Okay? So down into your squat, coming up. you just got to try and work on making sure your knee alignment is middle of the kneecap over the middle of the foot, not over the big toe. So if you can see your kneecap rolling over the front of your foot, it means your knee's rolling in. And that's gonna, not gonna be great when you're running and doing this sort of thing. So those of you who've had patellofemoral pain or previous surgeries or injuries to your knee, and your knee's a little bit weak, meaning it's rolling in, which is probably a hip that's a little bit weak, and that brain to hip is not perfect, then this is a good way of you sort of taking away the stability component a little bit as far as this is holding me up but I'm working on my stability component by loading up the muscles that give me the stability for my knee. I can then focus on, can I keep my knee straight and not let it roll in, okay? Keep it out, work on the muscles that keep it out, and get my form really, really good, because that is going to put me in a really good position for the next exercise, which I'll show you in a minute. So obviously both sides, you again, you like with the hamstring single leg deadlift, you're gonna notice one side probably stronger than the other, or you just feel more coordinated on one side, you feel like you've got more power, maybe your glute feels like it's working more on one side, but regardless, try and keep your reps and sets even, and work on you know, getting your form correct with everything, making sure that you know, your arm and your leg are synchronizing well, okay? And this will be a really good one to iron out those differences. Now, just one more final tip with that. Make sure, if you see me, what I want you to make sure of is you're trying to bend your knee forward as much as your hip backwards. Those of you who've got maybe a little bit of weakness or pain, say weakness in the tendon in the front here, bit of pain in the knee, you'll probably find that you don't like putting your knee too far forward. So you might keep it back a little bit and sit back into it, which sort of looks like a Romanian deadlift or single leg deadlift almost pattern. That's fine. What you're trying to progress to is letting it go forward as you sit, okay, and then coming back to fully straight. What I definitely don't want to see is you just pushing your knee forward and doing this without any hip involvement. Remember, this exercise is about this section more than this section because this is controlling what your knee is doing. You're gonna get the strengthening of the quad. Remember, we did a lot of quad stuff in bike leg, but the single leg stuff, I definitely don't want you just loading up your knee without any bum control at all, because the whole purpose is to try and focus on that. So make sure when you're doing that, you're getting the hips at least, if not more, than what the knees are doing. Okay, second knee stability and strengthening one is your step down. Again, another one of my favorites, but think of this as a single leg squat, but eccentric. So we are going from standing on a box going backwards, focusing on the backwards movement, so therefore your leg is going backwards. It's not going forwards, all right? It's not one of those ones, it's not a single squat where you do that, like a pistol type squat, it's going backwards. And again, it's gonna help you with that running movement where you're coming sort of down and up, all right? So, with this one, use a box, if you can. Preferably you open a box, because it teaches your brain that you're gonna step down off something, which gets you the correct movement. Um, if, if in doubt, just use the floor, but I'd rather you up on a box. Now, this one, you're definitely gonna see differences left and right. You're probably gonna find it's your non-dominant leg that is better. You might think, why is that? So if I'm a left footer, okay, say I was a soccer player, so I was a left footer, I have to stand on my right leg to do that. So I'm trained to be more stable on my right leg, and if I'm doing that more often, I'm spending more time on that than I am with that one, and it's just time. So the older you get, the more sort of, not more dominant, but the more likely you're gonna be stable on one leg more than the other. So, with this one, start on the box. Think about trying to keep your body weight over your foot, 
and even between your toes and your heels. I like placing my hands on the hips because it just gives you an idea of my hips need to be level. So if I've got here, I've got an imaginary line through here where I've got, think about maybe my t-shirt line if you like. I want to keep it level. I don't want it to be on an angle and drop down. That, if I go in that position, means this is not working very well. I need to keep it up. And if that drops like that when I'm running, my knee's going to roll in. Okay, so you need to be stable through here. So this exercise teaches you a bit of pelvic stability as well as your knee stability. So this from here, you're going to squat down and back, meaning bend your knee, bend your hips, lean forward, stay weighted, tap the floor, come back up, keep your foot off the ground. If you have to, put it down. If you lose balance, put it down. But you're trying to do the eight to 10 reps of this, three sets of this, on one leg, and keeping your knee over the middle of your foot. You'll see some people, and you've probably seen yourself, sometimes this happens, so your knee crosses in. All right, do you see that happening? So you don't want a knee crossing over, because if you're doing that on the box, when you're focused and controlled, imagine what's happening when you're running, okay, under load, and doing that for 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, whatever you're doing in that triathlon. So it's a really important one for you to try and iron out those problems and get that knee focused middle of your foot. So you should be able to look down, see your big toe the whole time. There'll be, you notice me, a little bit of wobble going on there. That does depend on how much pronation happens at the ankle and your general stability. So little wobbles are okay. You're not really going to get away with, you know, not having a few wobbles. It's the big diving in is what you don't want. That's the ones you've got to iron out. Again, left and right, you'll notice differences left and right. You might have an old injury on one leg, that sort of thing, but just make sure the knee's going forward, the hips are going back, the hips are trying to stay level here, okay? You might find there's a little bit of a drop going on here, but you've really got to try and correct that, keep it up, bend at this part, okay? So you're sitting back at the loaded leg as far as you can, keep the weight over here, come back up, try not to turn it into too much of a, if you look at me this way, try not to have too much of knee bend and, and tilt forward. It's not really a ballet dancer type movement. You're trying to let that knee go forward, but like with the other one, if you find that you'll, I'll show you this way, if you find that you're getting a little bit of knee pain as it goes forward, you can limit the knee initially and sit backwards with an aim for that to go further forward, because the further forward it goes, the more quads, patella, tendon strengthening you're going to get, the more loading capacity you're going to get on that knee, better the quads, okay, more conditioning for that leg for the run. So try and make sure that over time, if you are letting that knee sort of hold back, you're getting it bending forward, which will actually get you dropping down further as well without having to tilt over. Again, try and maintain, you know, have you got a neutral core? Don't you just let yourself round over when you do this. Um, and try and focus on that. Again, like I said, eight to 10 reps, three sets. Now you can choose to do like three sets in a row, meaning left, right, left, right, left, right, with all these exercises, or you just do one round of each, meaning one set of eight to 10 on each side of each exercise, and then do that three rounds, which is what I like sort of doing, because it means you're gonna get everything completed, and then you do another round, and then you try and get the third round in. Now you can advance that one. For some of you who are a little bit stronger, a little more stable, want to make a single leg exercise like that, and you don't have a, like heaps of equipment, you want to make it harder, or put some more load on to get some more strength, through, especially through the thigh, use a power band. Put that, there's two ways of doing it. You can go same shoulder, same leg, like that. So if you go same shoulder, same leg, or you can cross it over. So put it over like a sash, if you like. So if I'm doing my say, right leg, it'll be over my left shoulder. Pop that in to the middle of your foot put that on the box. So that's my front leg loading. So when I drop down, there's a load there already. Okay, so it's like having weights, but the good thing about the band, I don't have to carry the weights, don't have to carry the weights here, I can still work on my balance and control. And it's a nice variable resistance. As I go down, it's actually getting a little bit less, and then I push up, it's getting harder. So when I straighten my knee, use my quads, that's when it's getting harder. So you've got gravity and You've got a variable resistance, which really helps you with trying to control the movement on the way down and then power the movement on the way up. So a really nice one to add some load on if you need to. Now, when you're running, you also need your soleus, and it's a often forgotten muscle, and you need a lot of time when you're in midfoot running to push off. So 
we're going to do them off the floor, which is very relative to what you're doing when you're running. So if you imagine when you run mid stance, okay, you're like that. What we want is a bent knee. If you have a straight knee, you're going to use gas shock. If you have a bent knee, you're going to use the lower calf, which is your gas, which is your soleus, I should say. Try and keep not too much bend in the knee. Okay, I still want you to be able to see your foot because you don't run like that. All right, we're not right at the end range. It's going to be too hard to push up. So I want you sort of mid range. So you're not straight. You're not fully dorsiflexed. You're halfway in between. You should be able to see your toe. You can use this for a better balance. I'm not worried about stability or balance with this one. We're just on calf power. So what you've got to try and do is do a calf raise with your knee bent. Pretty simple stuff. But what people tend to do is they just tend to lift like that and lift their knee. And you can see when I'm doing that, I'm not doing anything here. All right. So what I want to make sure of is you are pushing the entire body up and down without the knee bending more or bending less. It's a little bit tricky and a lot harder than you think. So from here, you've got to try and lock the knee in place and push through your toes up and down without you bending or straightening the knee. Bending and straightening the knee means you're not going to get the elevation. Okay, So you push up through your toes, lock it up, slowly down. Okay, Same with this one, you'll get a lot of fatigue. You do this slow enough, you're going to get a lot of fatigue through that calf. So just be careful with it. Try and aim for your 8 to 10 reps again. All right? So maximum 10. I'll probably sit around 8, maybe 7 of these until you get a little bit stronger. And definitely obviously swap between the two. Sit on here, pushing up. One is going to be better than the other. Make sure again, like I said, push the whole body up. Don't straighten the knee. If you start straightening the knee, you're going to start using your gas shocks. So you'll have to practice this quite a bit to try and get the real sort of isolation of that muscle down there. Then you'll get the benefits of that. So make sure you add that one into your running leg. Okay, last one on the legs is your hip flexors. Now, totally forgotten muscle group for a lot of people. They focus on posterior chain, quads, hamstrings. Maybe they get a little bit of hip flexor when they're doing exercises, but not isolated. Now, when you're running, you need hip flexors, you also need on the bike. So this is a really important one to add in, and it's only one exercise, but remember, it's just complementing your running. So it does help you. If you find that you've got some strengthening issues with your hip flexor, meaning your psoas, your liacus, doing that sort of movement, even your rectus femoris, remember the rectus femoris is your quad, but it comes up the top and helps you do hip flexion. If you've got a weakness there, you'll find it on this, and then you can start working on it. All you need is a band. So just work on this, around both legs. Good thing about a mini band is it's pretty tight straight away. So there's no laxity at the bottom of the movement. This one, I would go straight into line. So one leg stays straight. If I put my right leg straight, my left leg is the one that's working, okay? Now even in there, that's on, okay? So I need to go from totally off, and I'm going to put my hands wherever I want. Sometimes I like to put them on my pelvis to make sure I'm not arching my back when it is. I've got to keep my core on in this position. I'm going to lift my left leg, bend my knee, come up as high as I can go, and then slowly down. It's just repetitions like that. So tighten here, switch this on. Think of, if you were running, if you were sort of doing this in a running position, we'll come to it in a minute. Start off in this position here. Think about, okay, lifting my leg in a running cycle and coming down. You're going to go to a little bit of fatigue on this one. So you'll feel this coming through the front muscle fatigue. It shouldn't be sharp pains or anything like that. And just test, you know, can you get up to 12 reps of this? You'll find the load is not too bad because you get a rest period at the bottom. It's not too difficult. And then straighten the other side, don't even have to move the band. What do you like? Left versus right. Again, keep that core on. You'll definitely find that one side will be, feel like it's tighter or weaker than the other. It'll probably correspond to the stretches that we go through. You'll probably find that some of these muscle groups that are fatiguing are also tight. When you go into the most mobility section with the legs, you know, work on the side. If, that, if you find your right hand side is weak and then you go, God, that's fatiguing, it's probably the tighter side as well. So have a look at that. But that's your lying down one. Now to advance that, if you find that's a little, little bit too easy, maybe you could go a heavier band, of course, but you can also do it in standing, which again gets to be a little bit more specific to your running movement, which is what we're trying to train. You can also work on your single leg stability in that movement. So go around your legs again. Now, what you want to aim for 
You can add a little bit of balance here if you want to start off with, but you're aiming for coming up into that position and down. Okay, so thinking left leg goes up, right arm goes up and down. All right? Make sure you're not sort of wobbling all over the shot, but just keep that running distance apart, up with the left and down. So up the left, right arm and down, trying to keep all this position stable. So I'm fixated here, up you go, add in the arm and try and train that. Now if you do repetition and repetition and repetition, you're going to improve the way your brain does that movement pattern. So when you are running, wrong leg, wrong arm, when you are running in that position, you're just going to be naturally more stable. You can't think about this sort of stuff. When you're doing a you know, 10, 20 kilometer run, the end of a triathlon, you cannot think about what your running form was like. You're just thinking about trying to complete it and not fatigue. So it's really important that you get all your pans of movement sorted first, and this is a great way of doing that, plus combining strengthening at the same time. Right, that brings us to the core section now. Just two for you today. Remember when you do all these core exercises across three videos across the week, you're covering a lot of core. Essential stuff for runners is working on your QL, going into a side plank, but also working on your anterior core and a running pattern, which is our dead bug. So side planks first. With the side plank, if you've done them before, I want you to add on a band because this helps you with anti-rotation. You see some people when they're running, their hips are rotating a little bit too much. We want to be not moving too much thoracic, okay, when we're running. We certainly don't, we'll be doing too much lumbar work. Now, if you're one of those people who's not got great core stability or you're a bit sort of hypermobile and you, if you find that you're sort of twisting a little bit when you're running, maybe someone sees that from behind, you're getting a lot of spinal rotation. This is gonna help you because you're gonna work on your stabilizers through your QO and your obliques, but also you're gonna teach your body to be anti-rotational, stop rotating through resisting an external force. I'll show you what I mean. With this one, this band is your external force. So if I go into a side plank like this, remember top leg goes forward, back leg goes back, have quite a long running stance, okay? So you wanna be in that stance where you think about like you're running. You need to go into a side plank on your feet and just stay there on the edges of your shoes, clench your buttocks, hold your core on. This one here, grab that band, and then this is your external load. When I pull, I'm working harder through my core, through my back to resist movement. I'm thinking about don't move at the spine. So I'm thinking I've got to maintain this, which is pretty clever. You know, your brain is just trying to maintain a side plank. You're not saying resist the movement. It's just saying, you're sort of saying, okay, I need to stay in a side plank. If you stay in a side plank, with an external force of pull like that, what you're working on is muscles to stop me rotating. So the band is trying to rotate me that way. So I'm working on muscles to stop me rotating. So automatically or subconsciously, I'm working on that pattern movement, which I'm just building straight into my subconscious here, which is gonna help me on the run. I don't have to think about it. I'm just gonna get stronger at not moving my pelvis around. So the pulling one, you do on both sides, obviously. So you do 10 on one side, 10 there. Now, if you want to work out how many reps and sets you're doing with this, simple stuff. Once you're in that position, you do 10 of these slow, okay? Don't just get in there and pull it. It is slow movement right through, back. You can focus on tightening your core, focus on strengthening through the arm, squeezing the glutes. You can see I'm working pretty hard here because it's a hard position to hold because I'm static, plus I'm moving here. Go through 10 pulls and that should be enough time on that side, okay? So 10 pulls left and right, then you do 10 pushes. You're probably fine, well I find, certainly, the pushing's easier than the pulling. So if I'm gonna go on a push movement, I go around this way, same sort of drill, up into my side plank, squeeze my buttocks, do my cord, and push it forward. Now this one is not as hard, I feel, on the anti-rotation thing, but essential that you do pushing as well as pulling both sides. If you think that's gonna be four sets to each side, sets of 10. And that will give me pushing and pulling movement. Okay, so imagine when I'm running, okay, I don't want my arm swing, swinging my thoracic around too much, 
or rotate my pelvis. Remember, when I'm swinging one arm, I'm swinging the opposite leg. So it's going to teach me, if I'm in that position, so it looks like I'm running, it's going to give me that anti-rotation work here. Heaps of spinal stability, fantastic exercise. So make sure that is in your core program for your run leg, for sure. Second one is your good old dead bug. Now you've got to make sure you do these thinking about core control over abdominal strength. You'll get the abdominal strength and the endurance by doing this, but you're trying to coordinate, like the bird dog we did before, you're trying to coordinate left arm, right leg, right arm, left leg, that sort of thing. So if you are in this position here, you want to start bracing your core here, not too much. You've got about to hold this on and breathe up here so you can't hold your breath. One leg goes up to tabletop position, then you've got to try and brace, Second leg up without the tummy coming up. So that's flat there. I should be able to still talk, so we're able to still breathe. Hands go up in there. Now, think about when you're running, it's opposite arm, opposite leg. So if my left leg is going to go down, my right arm is going to go above my head. And I want to make sure I'm not arching my back here. I'm not ballooning up in here. And then it comes back again. So have a look at your arms. When your leg goes down, don't move this arm as well. Okay, keep this arm here, right leg, left arm. The good thing about this is you can do left and right just opposites. Sort of like a bird dog. It goes faster than the bird dog. The bird dog is 10 seconds holds. These are maybe a couple of seconds at the end, a couple of seconds at the top. So, so one, two, bring it back, pause, one, two, and then go again. You'll find once you get to sort of 10 of those, which means 20 to be fair, so it's 10 on each side, this is really fatiguing here. Don't do so many that you're getting massive fatigue in hip flexors, or your tummy, if you watch this, balloons out to try and compensate, okay? If you're doing that and you're holding your breath trying to do it, then you're fatigued already, okay? You've got to make sure the core stability or core control is the primary focus, okay? And don't lose that just to try and get your abs burning, okay? You will find that if you don't keep your core control right, then it won't help your running. Remember, this is about strength and stability in your spine for running, not necessary to look great in a six pack. It is just for stability when you're running. And so you've got to make sure your form and your technique is always focused on that. It's not focused on how good your abdominals look or how strong your abdominals are. It's the whole system. Okay, final section is mobility. Now, again, you can do this before all the exercises or after, it's up to you. Some people like before, some people like after. And like I said, we are tidying up all the mobility exercises that we haven't done yet from the swim and the bike legs, but also we need to make sure we are attacking the quads. So that's first up. Try and work on quads like I like to do in kneeling. So if you have a bit of a sensitive knee, and I like doing this anyway, Put your knee on something soft. It could be a pillow, all right? It could be something softer. If you're out in the grass, that may be all you need. Make sure you're doing against the wall. The foot goes on the wall. Now, the closer the knee goes to the wall, the more stretch you're going to get. Now, some people, when they stretch like this, they don't feel it much. You've got to make sure you actually come forward a bit away from your heel. Don't just sit back on the heel and try and stretch like that. Come forward a bit. The reason for that is your rectus femoris comes up the top here. Once you get to that point, you then try and do a little bit of pelvic tilt. You see that? Okay, so rather than anterior tilt and letting your tummy relax, you're trying to do pelvic tilt here and draw your tummy on, which will give you a bit of glute here. So you think, okay, squeeze my glute here. When you squeeze your glute, you're going to get a relaxation of the front of your hip. You're going to feel that stretch right down through. Now, that's a really nice one to work on. Okay, I would do that every session you do your run leg, even multiple times per week, especially because you're going to get tight quads on the bike, you're going to get tight quads when you are running. So this exercise relieves off that tightness, makes the muscle more efficient, gives you more mobility through the hip and the knee, so when you're running, it's not as stiff and you're more fluid with that, but also it tackles any patellofemoral pain that might be coming in. Okay, If you're getting tightness around the quad, it'll drag that patellofemoral compartment tighter, all right, and that will give, maybe give you some of the problems that you're having in your knee. So this quad exercise is gold for you. One minute, maybe up to two minute stretches with a full glute on, both sides. And with the mobility section, you might find that you might want to do sort of all those three sets all in one go. If you were doing your strength exercises beforehand, I'm going to change legs, strength exercise beforehand, and you're doing like say one round of each, 
with the mobility section, you may find that you just want to do those three exercises or three stretches all in a row with this to try and really nail it. Because by the time, we so think of like the first stretch that you do, well that loosens you up a little bit. You know, it's pretty tight. Then the second, by the time you've done the other side, you're ready to go again. So you can go left, right, left, right, left, right. And by the time you get to the third one, you're really loosening up and stretching into it. Whereas if you just did one stretch and then waited for sort of that 10 minute mark into another one, it's probably sort of tightened up again. So try and work on getting the mobility and that mobility section done all at the same time if you can, like I said, before or after. But this one is your first one to do. Second mobility is your calf, cannot forget that. And a lot of people like doing this before their runs anyway, so you could actually add another set of this on straight before you run. With this one, try and keep the metatarsal heads on the edge of a step. Now you don't have to have a step, you can use a gutter, okay? So if you're out and about, just use a gutter. I would, instead of doing two at the same time, I would do one, which gives you more body weight, more load. So take one leg up, put that heel slowly down to the ground without bending your knee. So don't bend your knee with this one. Keep your knee straight and drive that heel into the ground slowly, but still keep weight through the front foot here, okay? So you're gonna hang off that step. You gotta think, let my body weight drop onto that heel. You may even find the heel touches the ground and then you get that stretch all the way up the back of the calf. If you keep your quads on, you'll keep that stretch in the gastroc. So work on keeping this tight, but relaxing the lower calf, okay? Really nice exercise to work on. Stiffness to the legs, you're gonna use a lot of calves when you are cycling and running. So this is a perfect opportunity to start working on this. Like I said, you may even have to do it extra sets during the week if you're one of those people who is getting tight calves through all the training that you're doing. Make sure working on both sides. The only problem people start running into is if they, uh, excuse the pun, is if they are having problems with their flexibility from an old ankle sprain. So they're saying you might have to work on even more, maybe one side, you think, geez, I'm not getting down as far on that one. And that may be the trouble leg as well. So make sure you're trying to work perhaps more sets. If I give you three sets of that, you might need to be doing more than that on the leg that is stiffer to try and get more mobility, even you up in the run, because it does make a difference on your foot placement and obviously what's happening throughout the chain when you're running. So third one, we're gonna work on lumbar rotation, but we're gonna combine pec and shoulder mobility with this as well, which helps you tidy up some of the mobility things you may have missed throughout the week. You need a roller or something like this to try and hold your arm down, because when you go into rotation, if you can combine me putting this hand like that under the roller, and if I put my head on it, that's gonna lock it down. So in that position, I'm gonna get an external rotation stretch and pec stretch on this side when I do a lumbar rotation on that same side as well. So I'm gonna take, keep my right leg straight, left leg over, okay? And this one is gonna open up my left hand side, my lower back. The good thing about this is you get that nice lumbar rotation stretch. It's gonna take you a while. You've gotta breathe out, just like the thoracic rotation one, to try and get as much stretch as you can here. The good thing about this is, like I said, you get pec stretch, okay? Maybe you've been really getting really tight from doing the swim leg workouts or the swimming you've been doing, but also stretches this out because in the running phase, you can do a lot of glute stretching, but this one here gives you that stretch that you probably haven't targeted yet. So you're thinking about, it's called lumbar rotation, but you're actually doing quite a lot of other things in that stretch. It's a really nice one to work on piece of cake just to sit there and stretch it out. You've got to try and find your glute med. So this is going to stretch out your glute med. Now, what you'll have to do is roll to the same side that you're stretching out. So if I cross my left leg over, I don't roll right, I roll left. I try and find the meat of that muscle and there'll be points in that muscle where you go, oh my goodness, that's really sort of painful but good pain. Okay, so make sure that the load is not too much. That's really jumping at you. There may be in some of those sort of tight areas that you might call trigger points that are just really feel, they feel like really knotty bits of muscle and you want to just massage those out. So this is like, you know, a physiotherapist or massage, getting in there and massaging this out. Try and stay on the side of pain. So just on that muscle in there and get to the point where you feel it enough and then roll back and roll forward and just trying to just use the roller to pancake out and slowly reduce the muscle pain that you've got. You'll find it starts off painful, 
but then you start working on it and it gets less and less and less as it eases off and desensitizes. So you sort of go to the point where until that feels like that. Okay, you may find you have to swap, you can only tolerate that for a minute, you swap to the other side. And again, like the quad stretch, you might be doing sort of three sets on this because the first one loosens it up, you work on a minute or so of trying to work on the other side, find all the little tight areas. You may have to go right over to find some of them, but just get into that level that's appropriate. Remember, to take the pressure off, you just roll back off it, okay? So don't get too involved with that because you are gonna do three of them. So by the time I get to back to this one again, you may find, oh, that's actually feeling a bit looser and you get the rest of it, you try and find other areas that are tight. And by the third one, that'll really hopefully be loosening that up. And this is a nice way to complement the other glute stretches that you are doing in the bike leg. This helps you get rid of the last little bit of tightness that's building up in there. And again, awesome to do pre-run. So as in the day before, you're loosening this up. So when you go to that run day, you don't have those stiffness problems going on when you start your run. So that's your run leg done. I hope that really helps complement what you're doing on the triathlon. Don't forget to check out part one and two, your swim leg and your bike leg to help with those other areas. See you next time.